Well, I don't know how this comes back to me, but I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, perfect. So, uh, perfect. Here is, just to show you, that's what I've done so far. That's, that's the one bank of... Uh, and that's, that's very uh, nice. Well, you've, you've done some neat work there. That's, that's nice, tidy work. Oh, you're building up my confidence already. <laughs> so how did you fasten that foam uh, to the, the stuff behind? I, 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 that's my second layer. I've okay. Got, I've got the first, the first layer is two inches. Right. The second layer is one and a half. The first layer, I just, I just uh, hot melted the glue Perfect. with Perfect. a little gun and put it yep. on as fast as I could after I got it laid down. And it seemed to take. I wasn't yep. sure if I just even knocked it, whether that would just drop off, but it seemed to hold. I put in, I put in nails on an angle after I had it in on an angle, just to, on the edges, just to hold it there. Because when I was putting on the, the uh, that insulate the the blowing foam, which you can kind of see there underneath, I only put it around the first the first layer. I, I got to do this second layer. Ah, right, gotcha. But, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it there? Where I've yes, I, yes, I do. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's beautiful. You've done a very sure. nice, neat job. I've, yeah, here's a here's sort of you can see it a little more obviously here under the window. Maybe there, or I've, or I've done it all around the window. Yep. Oh, great. But I was Excellent. worried. I was worried about the pressure of the foam, you know, curing and expanding might push off the uh, the stops. So that's why I put the little nails in on an angle. Just to hold it there, so there wouldn't be, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, because you know that hot glue. Once it once it dries, it's kind of brittle, and you just knock it, and it can kind of just just fall off. It can sometimes, although I have found that um, it works pretty well with the foam, and you know it's it's uh, it's only needed temporarily, yeah. because once you get that foam around the outside, then well, that's really what's hard. holding it in. Yeah, I was, I was just I, that's I want to get it to that point, and then I that I'm okay with it. That's why sure. I. Sure. That's why I, well, the glue was holding it. it seemed to be okay. It never, none of them actually came loose, but I did put four or six nails around the edges on an angle, just, just tap them in just to hold it there while I put the, uh, the foam around. And the foam sure. seemed to work okay. I've got that, that, that bomb, which you use upside down. Right. And uh, yeah, it seemed to, the, interestingly, the first, the first can, I seemed to go through it very fast. I took it back to Home Depot. The guy, the guy just looked at me as I was walking in the store. He says, I walked over to the area where they're selling them. And he said, well, is something wrong with that? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, did it ran out too soon? I said, yeah, like he knew. And then oh, he said, Here you he go. Hand, hand me another, another bomb right away. Didn't ask ah. any questions. No receipts. No signing my wow. brother's name or anything. But <laughs> so, Well, I, I wonder if they knew about a bad batch or something that wasn't yeah, filled properly. Really, I didn't pursue it. I just said, thanks. And uh and Perfect. I got some more help. The guy was very useful. He he had done it before, so he knew what I was doing, and he was able to uh, give me some tips. Excellent. Well, yeah. that looks great. That's uh, yeah, first rate. Well, now let me show you here. I don't know if you can see this so much. I'm now showing you the rim joist area. Right. I can see that. Mm -hmm. now, if you see it, there's this pipe right here. That's 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 actually that's the pipe I was using for my HRV, which I haven't reconnected yet. Mm -hmm. um, but up there, it's kind of there's not much room. And you can see there's a double there's a double header there along where the window goes, which right. So on that right in that spot there, there's no real space to put much. No. With with that with the with the original whatever you call that end board there, mm -hmm. two by ten or two by eight that's already there. And now there's another one over. There's double layer there. There's hardly any room to put in insulation on top of that without it coming coming out. Now I will be finishing. I'll be putting some sort of a drop ceiling or something along there to finish off that top area, so I could I could conceivably just pack on some more of this of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm 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 I know you're supposed to cover this with drywall when you're done, because it's a fire hazard, right? Or a right. burning hazard, I guess. It's, uh, yes. Fumes hazards as opposed to burning so much, so you have to cover it with something. Right. So I would, if I did put on some more pieces there and, and brought it out into the room a little bit, I'd have to kind of seal all around it with drywall, I guess, to seal it off. Well, it is is um, is your ultimate plan to to finish the walls and ceiling with drywall or something like it? Yes, the walls, but right. not the ceiling. I'm going to put because it's got so much junk up there. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm true. Put a drop ceiling to kind of keep all that stuff available if I need to get access to it. And this this hanging down vent here, I'm just going to 
sort of build around that or maybe right. leave, leave that exposed and painted or something. Sure. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, the, um, uh, I, I don't know why they would have put two layers of wood in that rim joist area there because well, it, like, to, to the right, they, they it, no they're around the, uh, around the window that one, that's, that's the reason, isn't it? It's, it's well, I, I'm not sure. Like it, it wouldn't really, it's not going to add any strength because the, the chunks of wood are in pieces. They're not, they're not all together, but it, maybe that's what they were thinking. I'm not sure that it really would add strength to it, but, um, the, the, the good news is that I think you can go right ahead and, uh, and go ahead with your foam even if it is going to stick in somewhat, because the idea with that foam uh, is that it does need to be covered. The, the reason it needs to be covered, as it was explained to me, is because the foam is too flammable on its own. So the main concern is that something might get it burning. So the requirement is that it be covered by something. And that something is usually drywall when it's on the walls. But if you put some of that uh, foam in there in the rim joist area and even if it's stuck you know past the edge a little bit right. it's still going to be covered by your your drop ceiling and it's it's not covered tight but it is sufficiently protected that it's not going to catch fire accidentally oh. i mean that's that's kind of the thinking so okay. i don't think you'd have any trouble with that um i mean uh you're going to have to do some more of your fine work uh in order to get the foam to go around well for instance there's a spot there where the extra wood stops yeah that's um, so you yeah. kind of have to do that in two layers you might want to since that wood is an inch and a half thick i think it would be easiest for you if you started with inch and a half because that's going to bring that one section there flush like the foam will then be flush with the wood and then you could add another layer on top of that and as i said it's going to stick in a little bit but um but I, there, there's no problem with that. Now, if you go further over to the right, uh, it looks like a, a duct there. Maybe it's a dryer vent pipe or something. It's just a pipe that, that's okay. the, that happens to be lying there. Actually, it's not. It's not going through. I've got. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. I've got two. The two. I got a vent there, which you can see. Mm -hmm. with, with, sorry. That, that vent there. That's the, that's that's one vent for the HRV, and the other vent is. You can see it over here. Ah, yes. There. That's the other van. And I'm just right now, you see, I've got a hockey sock stuck in there. Sure. I'm going to leave them there because I've got to probably put up the HRV after after I've got all this finished up. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I, I think you're doing it. You're doing an excellent job. And I would just continue, um, you know, in the same procedure in that rim joist area. And, and as long as, as long as the foam is, uh, the perimeter of the pieces of foam are sealed, so the warm air, moist air can't get in there. Right. Uh, you're going to be you're going to be great. That's going to work very well for you. Now, I, and again, I'm just thinking about I'm sealing off the that foam once it's up there. I can I can slap a piece of drywall on on sort of the, the, sort of the flat part, but the, the edges of it should I actually cover them as well with something? Well, I, I don't think you need to do any of that because your your drop ceiling is going to be covering everything. And that's now it's now you you might want to. I have never seen a problem with that okay. because, um, for instance, this this requirement to cover foam, it applies to all foam. So even if you were say having that professionally spray foamed up in there, which is an option that some people choose, uh, you wouldn't be able to cover it like in with drywall because it's going to be kind of uh, rough and undulating. It's not a smooth surface, so. Um, you know, in, in that case, you'd still be going with just the drop ceiling. So it's kind of like the same as that, except instead of spray foam, you have the rigid stuff. Okay. But yeah, that will be nice and simple. And you know, I, I like. Let's just imagine for a moment that that pipe I'm seeing there on the top right hand side. Let's just say that was going right out. It wasn't just sitting there. Yeah. That would be a very difficult area to cut pieces of foam for. You know, to the right of the pipe. It'd be hard to get it in there. In, if you run into situations like that elsewhere in your basement, uh, you know, areas that are really kind of small and finicky and, you know, uh, difficult to cut a piece of rigid foam to fit, 
you can just go right in there with your can of spray foam and kind of well, kind of coat cool. the area you know and so it, it's not going to look as neat but it is going to be just as effective uh, maybe you know maybe even more effective because you'll be able to get a proper seal around things like pipes and, and stuff like that but i don't know if you'll run into that but just keep that in mind well when you say that, I know that one area underneath the windows that I did was pretty thick, like it was about. But that, but that. Ah. Uh, okay. Thing, so I just, I just sort of put the thing on full open and put big beads in and just made, made it up. So I can. Yes. I, I kind of got the knack of what you're just explaining there. Right. <laughs> well, I you've probably noticed too that there's another knack, and that's using this stuff neatly, because. You know, I mean, it's, it, if it gets on your, you know, if it's very sticky stuff and there's and it's it takes a pretty, pretty powerful solvent to remove it when it's wet. And if you let it dry, there's no solvent that will touch it. So ha how have you gotten pretty neat with the application? At the expense of a pair of sweatpants, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't throw those sweatpants out until you've completely finished the job. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Keep the sweatpants going. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyways, well, that's that's what you've just told me is perfect because I I can cut a piece that's pretty close to that, leave a little space just as I've as I've been as you see that I've done here, so it allows it to do the ceiling part with the foam. And right. I mean, this this idea has been great. When I when I I think I told you I did get a guy over to look at it. He never even got back to me. He said he was like six months ahead and he'd get back to me. But I never even heard from him. When I watched a few videos of that stuff going in. And the friggin' spacesuit the guy what had on one in the <laughs> Oh, this can't be any good for, for him or for me. I don't want to even be right. in the house when this stuff is going in. And this time of year, everything's yeah. falling off. So sure. just, that just doesn't look like it. This is so much cleaner. And the little spray bomb, I mean, I do wear a mask when I put it on, but I can't smell a thing when coming off. No. No, it's 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 uh it's messy, but it's it's quite safe to use and uh and you know. I, I can tell from your work here that you're the the kind of man who who kind of likes to have things under their own control and and to take your time and to do a good job and 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 this this approach as opposed to the spray foam it allows you to do that and it's saving you a ton of money too because you know that guy who doesn't really want to come out you know in in the in the construction business when you don't really when you don't really want a job you don't you don't say no, you just say no by raising the price, yeah. right? So <laughs> you probably would have been faced with a pretty scary estimate there. Yeah, no, even he, if, was, he was talking about 500 bucks just to do this little bit. And yeah. He was putting me on a six month wait to get there. <laughs> no, this is but, so, it's clean. It's, it is completely under my control and my speed. And if I don't like exactly how it's working out, I can sort of stop and kind of do something to, to make it yes. work. The other stuff. And I, I mean, when you see what the guys are wearing, you think, well, if they're wearing all that, it clearly is it's not the best thing to have in your house. I know <laughs> it's only there, it cures fast and all that stuff. But anyway, this your method is uh, I think it's I think it's the way to go in it. Plus when you're doing it, it's kind of clean. Yes, it is. You see there, you know, those pieces they stick up there, they fit nicely, and it's really easy to cut that with a razor knife. It's not oh, hard. it is. It's it's wonderful stuff to work with. Um yeah. And I, I'm very glad to see that you've used the extruded polystyrene uh, instead of the white beady expanded because uh, that white beady expanded stuff, the, the warm moist air can go right through it. Not, not very quickly, but quickly enough that you get condensation behind it. So, but this acts as its own vapor barrier. So, um, yeah, well, and, and it's, and it's light, very easy to, to deal with. I mean, I've, I've, I've bought, Two pieces of, of the, uh, the uh, two-inch stuff. Sorry, one piece of two-inch stuff. One one piece of the inch and a half. So I, I spent sixty bucks, and the and the couple of cans, another thirty bucks, I guess. Or no, that was more like forty bucks, I guess. Two cans. That's all I spent so far. Right. And Excellent. So anyway, all is good. Thanks for the tips about that because oh, yeah. it seemed like a great area. Your your yeah. your thoughts on wool uh, wool insulation. It kind of looked kind of cool, um, but you're right about the moisture barrier and all that sort of stuff. That it's, it's I mean, other than the fact that fibers maybe aren't as dangerous for me, it still will be fibers around. Right. They, they sort of, it's, it's not as clean a job as this. Excellent. Well, it's uh, I'm 
I'm, I'm very happy to see your, uh, your success and your progress there, Jake. That looks terrific. So far, still much more to go, but at least <laughs> seeing progress. You know how you know, all these things go. Once you see, well, I've got over one step. Now the next step, I've, I'm down one. I can now I got <laughs> more. I can see one more. Anyways, Steve, this is great. Thanks for putting me into oh. the schedule for a few minutes. You're very welcome, Jake. And uh, you, you keep in touch. I'd like to keep posted on how things go. Well, if you're okay with that, I will. Okay, excellent. Take care. Bye, bye for now.